Hello there, Render friends. It's Nick here with the Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. And right before we get started today, I wanted to remind you that we are launching Grayscale Gorilla Plus any minute now. In fact, as soon as R21 drops, we're gonna have some brand new training to get you up and going with all the new stuff in R21. A lot to announce, a lot coming up. Make sure you head on over to grayscalegorilla.com slash plus to learn more. You could even reserve a seat over there for the launch. Without further ado, let's hop in to today's podcast. All right, we are back. For, it sounds like we're back from a commercial break. What kind of are, folks? Welcome to the Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. With me today is Michael Marr. How are you, sir? I'm doing super. I like that. That felt real good, energetic. And uh, of course, Chad Ashley, how are you, sir? Not too bad. How about you? Oh man, I'm I feel, I'm feeling it today. Got my second coffee. Uh, that's usually when I should stop, but uh, you know, I think I think we'll go a little bit overboard. It's a Monday. Uh, what what's been going on in the news these days? What's uh, any 3D craziness happening? Um, I know it's summer. Things get a little bit slow sometimes, but uh, what's been what's been going around around here? Oh man, just about everybody's getting their shows ready. We've got like um a big road show from Maxon. We've got uh Half Res is coming up. There's a bunch of other festivals like Blend. Um there's the big oh, yeah, Disney yeah, festival Maxon. right now. So we got all that Disney movie news, Star Wars and Marvel and way more Disney stuff than you'd expect to hear about. So who's who's signing up for Disney Plus? Me, I don't I don't have a choice, man. I've got I've got boys at home, and if I <laughs> oh, never yeah. have to buy another superhero movie, like it's already worth it. What you may uh, need to sell me on Disney Plus, because we're we're like, all right, I'm sure we'll get there. But I've been watching some more some more uh, superhero movies, stuff like that. So I may need a little pitch later today. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, events. Maybe we should start there with uh, some grayscale gorilla uh, uh, events that we'll. we'll that we'll be at essentially. We, I guess we're not really running any of these, but we're going to be, um, uh, of course, at Half Res this year. Uh, actually, Mike, can you fill us in? Can you give us a full calendar? There's so much happening this uh, this season. I can't. I can't even remember all of it. So uh, pretty much everything kicks off in September. Um, the first thing that some of you might have heard already is uh, Maxon is doing a 26 city road tour called the uh, 3D Design in Motion Tour. That kicks off uh, September 4th in Austin. Um, and then we're, we're sponsoring that event. We'll actually be attending a, in a few different cities. Um, we even got a discount for, uh, for you guys. We'll make sure you guys can get a discount on your tickets. Uh, right after that, uh, the Roadshow actually has a, a, a date in Chicago that is the week of Half Res. Uh, I think Half Res is September 18th. Um, and then right after that, that next weekend is blend. I know you're going to that, right, Nick? I think that's the, the 20th or the 21st. Yeah. I'm, uh, uh, hopping on a plane as soon as half res is over and heading to blend up in Vancouver. And I, I think I'll also be at the road show, uh, event in Vancouver as well. So if you're listening, come say hi there. And, um, I think I'm, I'm looking at my other dates. A couple of these are tentative, but I, I might be in Denver. I might be in Toronto. And definitely in Vancouver. And Chad, are you going to the Chicago uh, Roadshow event? Yeah, I'll be at the Chicago Maxon Roadshow event, uh, most likely Montreal as well, and then possibly sticking around in Montreal for the Montreal in Motion Festival as well. Ooh. And of course, we'll all be at uh, at the uh, the old Half Riz. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, now, Mike, are you are you heading to any one of these? Uh, I will likely head down for the Austin show. That's the closest road show to me. And then I hear that um, EJ will be in Dallas, I think the night after, uh, for like a MoGraph meetup here. So I'll probably head down to the, the Dallas MoGraph meetup as well. Dude, it's uh, it's huge. Go check that out. Um, they, they're they hitting some a, a ton of cities. They also have an upcoming, um, I don't know if it's Europe, or UK, what do they, they call that now? that other tour they're doing after this. Yeah, well, it, it's actually all at the same time. So between September, I want to say September 4th and December 6th, um, they're hitting cities in the U S Canada and Europe. Um, if you, you can head over to 3d motion tour.com. That's the number three D motion tour.com. 
They've got a list of all the uh, cities they'll be going to. Uh, tickets are available there. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, a lot. There's, Google, a, there's a lot of places. Don't Google Max on Roadshow like I did because it takes no. you to a <laughs> site. That I'm like, this isn't until October. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, like, <laughs> oh, geez. Anyway, so yeah, make sure you follow that, that correct URL, people. Yeah, you are looking for the 3D design and motion tour. Yeah, and and hey, if they come near your 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 uh your place of business, try to try to make it out to these. Um, it, it, I know it's a broken record. I, I feel like I say it every other podcast, but going to these events, meeting the people that that make the software that that you use, meeting the people that use all this stuff and are interested enough to like go out to an event is always worth it. Uh, if you're doing this as a career, go meet the people that are working near you uh and and say hi and uh just try to make some time for it it's always a good time uh and we're excited this year we're, we're also sponsoring the the u.s portion of it so go there you can win some stuff um and we also do we have that code actually here you can get a yeah. ticket yeah so tickets are regularly 95 dollars, um, but we have a 25 percent off code so if you use uh gsg 3d mt and we'll have that down in the show notes because it's a little confusing, and I'm sure you mixed up some of those letters. Is that an M or an N? M? Oh, that's it's amazing. A, as in motion tour. Um, but what's cool is that not only will you save on your ticket, uh, anybody who attends in person, you're going to get – it's almost like $1,000 in software. You're going to get like a uh, Cinema 4D subscription for like 90 days. You're going to get a Creative Cloud subscription, Redshift, Sketchfab. There's like a Kit Bash coupon. There's like a ton of stuff included for, for anybody who buys a ticket. That's awesome. Well, we hope to see you there. And if you're uh, obviously, if you're coming to Half Res, come say hi and blend as well. I'll be there in uh, beautiful Vancouver. Love that town. I'm trying to trying to get an excuse if I'm going to go try to try to mountain bike up in the, up in the mountains there i don't know am i gonna hurt myself I, I... yes I'll probably probably make for a good podcast episode it'd be good <laughs> it'd be good um well, that's originally where i got my mountain bike bug was up in vancouver and so i kind of feel like i need to go back but uh but man that's a, that's an extra few days uh, and i got some other uh tour cities to road show <laughs> so I gotta get back home, get my butt back on a plane, hopefully see you in your town. But um definitely check it out and uh and it is. It's it's event it's event time. It's event yeah, time. Yeah, stay stay tuned to like our blog or um our social channels and we'll make sure we keep you up to date on which upcoming events uh either Chad or Nick will be at and uh you'll know you'll know more about it. Awesome. Excited. Well, um what else what else is going in the in the three D world these days? It's up to three dimensions now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much has changed there. Uh, there was the uh, the new T T H X uh, intro that was announced. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, I think it was earlier this week or late last week. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, Andrew Kramer worked on that, right? Yeah, Andrew Kramer and uh, it was a, a great design team. They pretty much like looked through the history of the T H X logo and. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's like whenever you went to see a movie at the movie theater and it was just, what was the noise? I think Chad could do the best noise. Do oh, it, Chad. Geez. I don't remember it, to I be honest. I think it needs I, all three of us to really like combine. Isn't it like... I think that's pretty close. I, I think, think we, we did. I think that. everybody For those of you that didn't quit. tune out, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah well the, you got to play the teach how else are you going to know if your uh surround sound speakers work it's true <laughs> before no, there's your movie really start. Cool, there's your cool bows. behind the scenes so they did like this behind the scenes video and they show you how they like build the audio spatially in 3d and like move like the the logo throughout the rooms and stuff it's pretty neat uh it's a killer it's a killer piece of work definitely go check it out and yeah they kind of uh, they even show the cute little robots. That, that's that's what was big back in the '90s when I was like, I was trying to build a VHS home theater system in my own house, um, and uh, and I've always got the THI. I always got the wide. First of all, always got the widescreen for for some. You know, I, I had to be the purest, but widescreen on a VHS, by the way. <laughs> oh God, not a lot of resolution to deal with. Um, and it's so, but. 
they did surround sound pretty good. And they always had the T-Checks thing. I always got excited. And they had the cute little robots that would like pick up the letters and kind of solder them together. I don't know what they were doing. Welding? Well, I don't know. Uh, anyway, this new one's way better than the ones in the 90s. Go check it out. It was, it was really fun. Um, now, hey, speaking of uh, surround sound, did you guys, I don't even know if this is still around, but one of the things I remember playing with in Cinema 4D right when I, right when I got excited about it was their sound capabilities. So you mentioned, uh, Mike, that they, they built the behind the scenes with uh, like all the surround sound and all this stuff. Did they use the Cinema 4D tools to do that? Do you know? No, I don't think so. I think this is kind of like whatever that custom state of the art THX stuff they're working on. Oh, of course, uh, of but course. I do know, I do know, I know some cinema was involved. I would guarantee you, if it's not in the final thing, that Element 3D and After Effects was used to like mock up stuff. And I'm sure there's some elements in there. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure how they rendered it, but we can we can hunt down some more details on that. Okay, I'm I'm looking up in. Um, so a little sneak peek, I'm, I'm looking up inside of R21 right now for the old school sound tools that were a part of Cinema 4D. I, I don't even know if they're still here, but what you could do is set up essentially microphones inside of your 3D world and then attach sounds to your 3D objects. And then you would animate your 3D objects around, and then you would place microphones around in your scene to pick up the the sound mm -hmm. and then if you had a, a a microphone behind your camera essentially it could you can make it fly around in circles and then it, it would output the surround sound data for home theater and and movie theaters does that make sense am i am i explaining that properly yeah they had that built in i'm gonna just type in microphone <gasps> oh my gosh i think it's still here i want to go play with it oh man i can't believe all right sorry Little little side note, but I had to see if that was still there. I literally played with it for a month straight, made all these cool surround sound things, played it on the home theater, and then never, never used it again. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great testament to that tool set. I'm sure it's still great. I'm sure the uh, THX tools are a little bit, a little bit better. I'm guessing, but uh, had to go see. I totally forgot those were in there <laughs> until I thought about it. I had no um, idea those were in there either. I, I think there was something used to be something like that for 3ds Max too, but I don't. I don't think I ever used it. Well, it's a cool. It is. It to me, it was like such a novel way to do surround sound, where you could just do it in 3D. Like you didn't have to have all the microphones set up in in real, you know, real life anywhere. You just set up a bunch right. of fake microphones, animate a car driving by. Wonder if it does like the Doppler effect and all that. So I don't know. I gotta go play could, with it now. Could you like just throw a a tag on your character to make it talk? Ooh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude. <laughs> You're just, like thinking about it. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. Uh look look on Instagram in the next month. See if I see if I end up playing with the surround sound tools. Instagram support surround sound yet? What's going on? We're all going back to stereo. <laughs> it's not THX certified, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, that's bad. Um, yeah, to anybody listening, if you just want to pull out our uh, custom-made THX logo that we made just a minute ago, I, we would love to see what you uh, put together there. Oh, the sound effect you mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get a free t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. What's, what else going on in the biz? A lot, of, a lot of movie news. I don't know if you guys are are big Disney Disney nerds like I am, but I've been kind of following along with all the D23 announcements. Yeah, so so D23, explain that to me, because I, I kind of tangentially know what that is just you know from consuming news, but give me the lowdown. So D23 is kind of like um, the big Disney event. It's kind of like a Comic-Con if you're really into Disney stuff. Um, it's almost like going to this massive show. It's in Anaheim, and they have you know different panels where you can see like, uh, stuff that they're working on in the Star Wars world, stuff they're doing with Marvel movies, stuff they're doing with Walt Disney Animation, Disney Studios, um, pretty much anything that the company is touching uh, in any way, you can learn a lot. But this year was was a really big year because it's uh, they're they're finally 
releasing all the details about Disney Plus, which drops here in like uh, a couple months. Yeah, that's cool. I can't wait for that. Yeah, first of all, what what isn't Disney touching these days? Sounds like it's, it, it seems like they're on top of everything. And and B, yeah, what so so Disney Plus, uh, it's obviously their membership thing, but uh, what are they re- removing from everywhere else? And what's gonna be what's gonna be in this thing? Do I need Disney Plus? That's really the question. Probably, <laughs> you're, you're not. There's no. There's no escaping. There's no escaping. Like I think uh, once Dis, uh, once Netflix licenses expire uh, with any Disney related content, all of that's going to be on Disney Plus. But what's cool is if anybody is familiar with like the Disney Vault, like their archive, where you know when DVDs and and Blu-rays came out, they they bring an old animated film back and only for a limited time and all that stuff and. Like if you want to go buy Bambi right now, you'd probably have to buy like a eight hundred dollar Blu-ray disc that's impossible to find. So they're oh, doing right. away. They're doing away with the vault. So all the classic Disney movies are coming in. Um, anything from the Disney Animation Studio, everything from Pixar, um, almost all of the Star Wars movies. I know there's some weird licensing with like the original trilogy, but I'm sure they're working that out, and they'll have all Star Wars content. Um, Simpsons, all the Marvel stuff. Uh, Simpsons will be separate. So, <gasps> God, I, I'm so on. sorry. I'm so sorry. I know all of this stuff, guys. I'm just a, uh, so much worthless information. So, anything that they uh, bought from Fox. So, Disney acquired Fox um, earlier this year, I think. Um, anything that's rated R or most of the Fox content is going to live on Hulu. And so, Disney's actually launching three streaming services at once uh hulu's already out and they're going to migrate all of their like etc shows there and weird movies and r-rated content will probably live on hulu disney plus will be all of your family friendly content all the big blockbusters your lion kings your iron man movies all that stuff and then they're also launching espn plus which is their new streaming sports package Um, that'll do all of their live events as well as like, you know, regular football games, UFC, all that kind of stuff. God, they're huge. This company, it's amazing. First of all, uh, Pixar, where, how, how much Pixar stuff is going to be on the, on the plus? Do we have, do we have word? I think it's going to be all of it. Yeah. It's going to be all of it. Oh, all right. I'm in. (laughs) Plus dude, I got, all I have to do is pitch this one show to you. And and I, if you're as big a fan of this guy as I as I hope you are, your your game, they have a show called The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah, well, what else do I need? And he is he's amazing. <laughs> that guy's the best, and that show looks amazing. Uh, all right, oh, I'm I'm in. Look, if I can watch, um, if I could just watch Bug Life, Bugs Life on loop, I'm good. That's all I really need. That's uh, I'm ready. Uh. I'm in. I already got the Hulu. In fact, we just finished big news, breaking news. We just finished uh, all the Veronica Mars stuff. So we're, I'm really needing the next thing to to kind of to start to start picking up. So well, I think there's going to be some more Veronica Mars stuff here pretty soon. So there's at least that. <laughs> oh man, I can't get enough. Let me tell you, that's so great. That's the uh, we. My wife and I watched through all all of the originals. And then we had a and then we had a, t- a tangent with the movie. I guess she spelled it out uh, the timeline, the, the Veronica Mars timeline. But we're we're caught up. Um, so yeah, let's go Disney Plus. Bring on the Bugs Life. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the Mandalorian. That looks really really good. Which is, I think, um, I don't remember the timeline. I think is this the uh, is this sort of like the origin story of Boba Fett? Is that what this is? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, gonna... The trailer looks killer there. Uh, they, they haven't announced too many details about the film or the series itself. Um, the stuff we do know is, uh, so Disney plus is going to avoid the binge model. And so they're going to do weekly releases. So I think the Mandalorian, like episode one will be available at launch. And then like a week after they'll drop the next episode and so on. So they're going kind of traditional with the release, but that show looks incredible. They're also launching with um, a Lady in the Tramp film that they've announced and dropped a trailer for. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, They're bringing also a bunch of the Disney television series are going to live in Disney plus too. So um, I know Lizzie McGuire is coming back with like, thank thank goodness. (laughs) Wow. I'm so Lizzie Lizzie McGuire in her thirties guys. I'm, I'm ready. I don't know about you guys. (laughs) (laughs) All the, all the Disney shows, I think we're just past my age where I, I, like Nickelodeon turned into an and Disney turned into an entirely different thing as soon as I like grew up. Like, what was the last thing? Maybe SpongeBob was like on the on the cusp, you know, or like like I don't know, Rocco's Modern Life or something. I I don't know. I'm dating myself. But then all this Disney stuff came through and I, I didn't get to I didn't get to enjoy all those shows. I was uh oh, man. I watched them all with my kids. I think we watched <sighs> iCarly. Actually, I don't think iCarly was Disney. I don't know. We watched a lot of that stuff. High School Musical, all that stuff. There's a new High School Musical series on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, man. just when my kids completely all. grow out of all of that stuff, they come out with this. <laughs> 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 yeah, my uh, kids don't even watch TV anymore. I don't know what it is. Like, It's just kids don't watch TV. They're on their phones or they're on Netflix, but they're not like consuming cable or tv the way that we did it's pretty crazy disney knows this the mouse, you're, you're, the mouse you're, is in the house you're going through this right chad or are you doing the the cable the what do they call it the cord cutting the cable cutting i think we are we haven't officially canceled uh xfinity yet but we're testing out some stuff right now i mean what it came down to is i just noticed that every time that my wife and i sat down to watch tv we were going to either Netflix, Hulu, or like HBO Go. And we rarely ever tuned into actual live TV cable only to watch like the news and football in the football season. So I started looking at that and how much money I'm paying every month to these people. And it's just, it just doesn't add up. There's no reason to do it anymore. So I, I did a lot of research and exploration and we have a smart TV Uh, that you can download apps and stuff on. It's a Roku TV. So I downloaded YouTube TV on the the TV, and that gives you, I think, 90 channels, including all your local channels, including um, FX, FXM, all those sort of channels. And it allows you to watch football, sports, whatever, unlimited DVR. And I was like, yeah, that's only 45 bucks a month, I think, or 49 bucks a month. And it just, it made so much more sense. So we're giving it a shot. See how it goes. Yeah. I, uh, that there's so many more options now. I think you're right. It's like the sports thing is really the, the hardest one to figure out. It seems we don't, we don't watch a ton of live sports, but it's my, well, let's just say this. My brother-in-laws are always bummed when they come to my house. They're like, <laughs> you're that guy. Yeah. Where's, <laughs> where's the game, dude? I'm like, and then I got to jump through like eight hoops to put like the baseball game on. They're like, well, how do you live like this? I'm like, I don't, sorry guys. Like what is wrong with this dude? So um, you want to, you want a really weird uh, rabbit hole story? Uh, baseball, MLB specifically is the reason like Disney plus exists right now. So there's a, uh, uh, back in the early two thousands, uh, major league baseball pooled all of their teams together. And like, I think every team had to put in like a million dollars a year for like four or five years. And they built what was called MLB advanced media. And it was essentially the first like streaming sports site. And they were going to sell tickets online and they were going to start streaming games. And essentially they built like one of the most successful streaming companies ever. Um, It's kind of since split off. It's called uh, BAM Tech now. And uh, what BAM Tech does is they are running um, the MLB stuff. They're doing streaming for the NHL, PGA, uh, World Wrestling They do like uh, Riot Games, which is like all the League of Legends or League of, I can't remember what, video game streams, esports. But Disney bought the majority share in BAM Tech about a year or two ago. And now BAM Tech is building Disney Plus, uh, ESPN Plus. And so they're they're like the secret people behind a majority of these streaming services. Do they... 
Well, maybe that's the next thing I got to go solve is this live sports thing. <laughs> Chat, let me know how the, the YouTube thing works out for that, huh? Well, I watched, I already watched one Bears game. And what's great is that you could actually record all games on limited DVR and all that stuff. But what's awesome is that you can watch it on your phone. So you can start watching the game in the living room. And then if you want to go out and sit on the patio or go for a walk or whatever, you can just start, you can keep watching the game on your phone, but it is tied to location. So, you know, there's all sorts of uh, NFL rules that you can't watch. I don't know what they are exactly, but basically it means that I can't watch a bears game if I'm not in the bears area. So it it looks at your uh, uh, phone location. So yeah, you're not gonna be able to like cheat the system and like watch if you're in, I don't know, on the West coast and you want to watch the lions play, like you're, you're not going to be able to do that. But um, yeah, so far it's pretty impressive. I got to say it's like really good quality too. Like the, the quality of the stream is great. Uh, the interface is pretty much the same as YouTube, so you already kind of know it, which is nice. Because I tried to use tried using Hulu for a while, and we still watch a few shows on Hulu. But I gotta say, Hulu has probably the worst interface of all of them that I've tried. It's just yeah. not a good interface. A lot of excessive scrolling. Yeah, and those like really thin lines under stuff. Like I can't tell what's selected or where I am. It's very yeah, strange. That, the Hulu interface with an Apple. TV remote is like a carnival game. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard to figure out. And it's always, you always want one, you get two, you scroll down two, you get one. And then if they show you the wrong episode, you got to like do a hard press in and then, yeah, it's, <sighs> it's bad. Yeah. It's See, bad. that's why I, I, I was kind of like, people were telling me to go to Hulu and I was like, dude, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can deal with that frustration every time I want to change the channel or something. I'd, I just want to make it simple, make it easy. If you do what they think you want to do, then you're fine. Like if 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 you just binge watch all of Veronica Mars in a row, <laughs> then you're fine. You're living in a world where they want you to just go back to the app and click next show. But as soon as you're like, you know, jumping around to find something, yeah, it gets it gets bad. The only thing that saves the the app the Apple TV side of it. So so my setup is Apple TV with Hulu, Go, uh, HBO Go, and and YouTube and Netflix, and then we're and, and oh, this is what I wanted to remind you too, Chad. You're close enough to potentially two major cities where an antenna might be something you want to look into if you don't already have one because we I get thought about that live. But... It's so beautiful. It just for image quality, Chad. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. It is so much nicer than cable for sure. But I think even the YouTube streams, it is like the bit rate is bonkers when you're watching the antenna feed. You lose all the DVR stuff and all that, but that saved my butt on baseball games for sure. Oh, yeah. But it, yeah, but it also saves one. my butt on some things like the, the Grammys or the Emmys or whatever. We just like watch it right there. Yeah, I'm such a slave to the DVR though. Like I can't give up the DVR controls, you know. Got to have my pause. Got to have my pause. <laughs> That's right. Don't want to miss it. We we definitely have had the moment on watching antenna TV where we're like, "Oh my gosh, commercials are the oh, worst." That, yes, dude. That forget about it. You're like that? No way. And then can't same deal. thing too where we'll be watching something and then we, we kind of have, uh, I don't know if everybody has this, but you know, my, my significant other and I have a little like visual code that means pause it so that we can talk about what happened or whatever. So instead of trying to say it out loud, like, Hey, can you pause it? There's like a hand gesture, right? Well, you know, one of us will be watching <laughs> some live thing and one of us will be like, Ooh, that's the actor from whatever. And like gesture to like go pause it so we could find out who that actor is. Or, like put, keep the thing on the screen so we could read it. And every time, every time I reach for the Apple remote, I hit the pause button and then I'm like, fucking Apple remote doesn't work. And then I'm like, okay, I'm watching live TV every time. And like a barbarian. You- like a barbarian with commercials. And every time I'm like, I, I'm so glad I don't live in that world anymore. You just dial it up, pause it. I know. Do you guys use Amazon Prime at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. actually. I think I think their little like 
pause or hover feature is so underrated and so incredibly impressive that like when you're watching something, you can just pop up the menu that tells you what actor is in that scene, what song is playing. Like it's really nuts. Yeah. I've seen that somewhere else too. I want to say the Google movies app does that where if you pause it it draws a little circle around the actor's face and like has a little headshot of theirs and tells you who's on the screen and stuff that's crazy i love that stuff because that that's the kind of thing where you're like oh you know who is that and then hit pause and then you're not like searching imdb for half an hour wasn't shazam trying to figure that tech out too i don't know if they finally did it but they were their goal was to do for the shazam audio but do it for movies and TV where at any moment you could just pull out Shazam, hit the button and then it'll listen to your audio where you are and then know what you're listening to as fast as it does it. It's alien technology that Shazam. And then they would show you like what, like what people were wearing and what, who was on the screen. Is that still a thing that they give up on that? I don't think it, it worked because they, they tried a thing where they were doing commercials and the Shazam thing would pop up and you could play the song and it would like time, it would know the audio and pull you up to like the client's uh, website for like whatever cleaning supplies. But the problem is when those commercials are on, you only have 30 seconds. So by the time you turn your phone on, unlock it, open Shazam, you've already missed the commercial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, look, look, audience, uh, if you've been looking at cutting the cord, you found the right episode, my friends. <laughs> I think I'm late to the game, dude. I, I tweeted it and everybody's like, oh, I haven't had that in years. I haven't had it. <laughs> I, it's been probably, tw- oh man, like 12 years for me. Wow, dude. Really? Yeah. I was, I was very poor in college, man. There was no point in trying to get cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, I think it was the year after. What year did the Bears win um, uh, the Super Bowl? Or the, or the they made it to the finals. Sorry, it was like oh seven, oh eight, something like that. Uh, I think it was either. I think it was oh six. Anyway, whatever year that wrong. was, I watched every Bears game on Comcast cable, and then the next year I moved and I cut the cut the cord, and um, it was it's been great ever since. I think essentially. <laughs> uh, I, one of the things about getting older is all your antidotes seem like you're ancient now. Like I had Netflix <laughs> when they shipped DVDs to your house, yep. and uh, when as soon as they switched to like Netflix streaming, and I could do both, I was like, I don't need anything ever again. And I just canceled cable around then. So I think that was oh oh eight oh nine. It's been great, Chad. Let us know your results. I'll keep you posted. I think. Uh... I think it's going to work out. My biggest test was, you know, is my wife going to get frustrated with the UI or whatnot? But she seems to be taken to it. I think what helped is I showed her how much money we were going to save a year. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she, so every time she's like frustrated about something, she I could almost like see it, hear her think about that. And she's like, nah, I can live with this. Yeah, it's still worth it. Do, do you and your wives uh, watch stuff together or are one of you streaming the TV while the other one's on their phone watching something else? Uh, almost always together. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. We, we watch we watch stuff at night together on the actual TV couch. But then uh, my wife watches on her laptop even at night. Like even if I'm off doing something else, she won't sit down in front of the TV She'll watch everything on her laptop and like uh, carry that around with her. Like it's pretty, uh, I, 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 that's not how my brain works, but she definitely does it that way. What's, uh, what's your, what, what do you got, Mike? Uh, most of the time we, if the boys, if all the boys are asleep, we can watch a show together, but anything that has like language or stuff like that, it pretty much rules out. So we watch a lot of kids shows and kids movies. Uh, but finally, when they go to bed, uh, we'll watch things like we just finished uh, The Boys on Amazon Prime. Highly recommend that. Mm-hmm. Really, really good show. Um, and we did Chernobyl. And, you know, when you're getting into these R-rated stuff, it's really hard to watch that together when you have little children that could pop into the living room at any time. Yeah, that doesn't really change. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be watching stuff. And, yeah, the you know, my girls are much older, but they uh, you still don't want... 
you still don't want your kids walking in to an inappropriate scene no matter how old they are it's super uncomfortable to like have your parents watching something with nudity and you walk in so yeah we're constantly like do you have the remote where's the remote i think the kids are coming down get on the remote and so we're just like our fingers always on the remote to like turn it off or change the channel yeah so that that doesn't really ever go away did you guys always do that that classic uh, thing when you were a kid that when you knew an, a nudity scene was coming up that you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. That's always the worst feeling in the world. And then you just sit there silently waiting for the moment to pass, like praying <laughs> that it just goes by without anybody. Please don't say anything. Please don't. Like, please, Dad, don't make a joke. Please. Can I hear me? Am I breathing too heavy? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. uh, not, not good. Not good. Well, look, I'm here's here's what I'm ex- I'm I'm glad that uh, that all these people decided to name their thing plus. It made it a lot easier when we decided to <laughs> name something. <laughs> That's mostly, we consulted with them, actually. Yeah, we're like, look, Disney. Here's what we're here's what we're planning here at Grayscale Gorilla. We're gonna call it Plus, and you know, it's gonna be a, a membership, and it'll it'll just be easier if we all. And hey, Apple, to hey Tim, Timmy Cook, come here. We're, we're going to all plan this together and then um, everyone will understand when, uh, when it comes out. And so, yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad we all kind of came to a consensus on that and uh, you know, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all there. Um, well, goodness, well, goodness. I, uh, what else was on our, uh, our topic list for today? I want to make sure we, we have time for everything. Um, I guess uh, if, uh, speaking of plus, uh, we still can't announce it yet. It's so we will have some big news on plus um, uh, when R21 is launched and released. So we can say that. Is that correct, Mike? Correct. Okay. That week is going to be <laughs> that week is going to be a crazy week. Um, other than that, we have, yeah, everything else is just big stuff planned that I can't mention yet. I'm so bummed. <laughs> but it's not it's <laughs> what a teaser you're welcome folks out there in the internet world <laughs> what a teaser so actually uh chad have you played with r21 yet i have not played with it i i got kicked off the beta for uh being rowdy no i'm not i i was kicked <laughs> off the beta because i didn't I, I didn't participate uh i'm in a lot of betas and sometimes i just don't have time to like be the best beta tester. So I f- totally understand that I got booted. But yeah, I have been watching what's been going on. And I've been watching some of the R21 stuff that that uh, that we've been producing. And it's got some stuff in there that I think, I don't think a lot of people are really talking a lot about a, a few of the features that I'm excited about. And I think they will once they start playing with it. I think this release has a bunch of great quality of life features that may don't they may not look super sexy on uh, the page. Like there's no uh, fields, you know, there's no like big flagship feature. But there's so many cool little things that I think are going to help people and make their lives easier that it's definitely worth being excited about, especially if you've butted your head up against uh, a couple different things like scene organization stuff, uh, text or logo beveling. I think not enough people are talking about that feature, which is really, really good. Um, what else did I see in there that was getting me excited? Uh, oh, the uh, the custom icons, I think, are really, really cool. I can't wait to play with those. Can't wait to make my own custom icons for scene organization. So, okay, so how do you, how do you do a custom icon? Yeah, here. so they've got they've got this new ability to I think with like a lot of the different objects in the object manager, you can dive into I forget what tab it is, but you can actually create uh, you can actually change out the icon for your let's say a null, and they have some preset icons in there, and you can even change the color. But what what's really cool is you can make your own icons and save them as a preset. Oh, okay, that yeah, game changer. Yeah, dude. So if you're looking to like, you know how it is when you have a tons of objects in your scene, you start using nulls as organizational devices, not necessarily as like a null to like, you know, manipulate or do any sort of hierarchical animation. But using the null to like organize your stuff is something that everybody does. So imagine being able to put like a folder icon 
on the null and then maybe change the color to a color that you associate with folders and then save that as a preset. So now every time that you want to organize your scene, you're not using the janky mm. null icon. You're actually, it actually makes visual sense. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Andy did show me that. Um, so, so Andy Needham, he's working with us for the R21 training. He's been, uh, knocking out of the park. He's been sending over videos and we've been talking online a bit and he showed me that it was all organization and there's like a ton of different icons too, right? Not just like three or four. Yeah, there's a bunch of icons and to be completely honest, uh, they're kind of weird and not like ones that I would have made, like there's a horse and like a uh, pair of underwear. Um, <laughs> and, but hey, man, to each his own. So I plan on uh, creating some for us and uh, having some fun with that uh, and making some really nice looking ones. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we need a we need a whole library of these things. Um, yep. so I, so I've been talking with, with Andy and learning a lot more about the, the new stuff as well and playing with it, um, making some videos for R21. And I think I'm feeling the same way, like getting more excited about R21, the more I play with it. And the more I find these little details and little, the way that they made the presets a little bit easier and the, and the way they organize things a little bit nicer. Have you, it's, it's, it's like this, have you, have you ever like rented a car and you got in and you the interface was just so un um uh like unorganized in a way where you you had the car for like two or three days and you still didn't quite understand how to turn on the air conditioner after all three days like just if you ever had a car so poorly organized or like or even just a subtle thing like you go in and you get the big the big bottle of water because it's a road trip you don't want to stop again and then you go to try to put that in the in the uh, cup holder and you're like, okay, this was not, this was designed for like a can of soda who nobody, which no, no gas station sells anymore. It's all giant 20 ounces. And then you finally get a car that's like, well thought out, everything's in the right place. And you, you, there's like a little place for your phone, which no car has like a little, little holder there. And that's, that's kind of how I feel now in R21. Like there's a place for everything. It's, it's thought out the 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 high beams are where they should be and the the air conditioner's easy to find and now i go back to the old car and i'm like okay this is this is a little bit more scrambled up than i remembered it kind of it kind of took a nice interface and a nice layout to remind me kind of how clumsy some of the 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 things are so that's kind of those like you had a better way to say it chad like uh these these day to day uh, workflow quality of life yeah quality exactly it's those it's those like intangible quality of life things that you don't notice until you go back to it and then you're like it's like commercials <laughs> it's like commercials on your tv you're like how did i ever live like this <laughs> and then once yeah. you're in the new interface um it's it's a lot more logical a lot more easy to to find things once you know where they are it takes a little while to get used to it but uh, i've been i've been really enjoying those kind of kind of things and playing around a ton with uh field forces of course that's the that's the big fun thing but really what i've been doing is just kind of rediscovering fields as well just a, a good excuse to kind of dive deeper into the power of fields now that there's more fields to play with kind of re re-looking at r20 and and all the power that that brought which i'm which i know a lot of us haven't even had time to really dive deeper into that so um, I'm excited. I'm excited to get this, this training into, uh, grayscale gorilla plus I'm excited to play more with R 21 and, and get some of these, uh, tutorials to guys too. So, um, I, yeah. will, I will add to that, that, uh, once, uh, R 21 is available, you will be able to still see some stuff from us on YouTube. Um, we'll have, uh, a new tutorial up there. Um, but yeah, we're doing some pretty, pretty fun deep dive stuff uh, over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus that we're excited about. Yeah, I'm excited for both. Um, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at a scene right now. This is not helpful in a podcast situation, but what I'm looking at here in R21, looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna go play with these uh, these icons. I gotta go figure it out. What's fun is we can. I can go watch the training <laughs> from Andy because I know. <laughs> I know what a you made it. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna go watch it. Na 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 na. I get to go watch it before you guys do. And I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go figure this out. Uh, but yeah, those 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 types of things are 
are super useful. Um, I'm going to dive deeper into that right now. Well, cool. Um, well, other than teasers, we can't tease in the future. We do have our events coming up. We have uh, the Plus Launch, which, by the way, if you want to be um, notified about the Plus Launch when that uh, happens early September, make sure you go to uh, gracegogorilla.com slash plus. Put your name in there. Reserve your seat. And um, it's it's going to be quite the week. We got a ton of stuff all about R21. I know, Mike, you've been working really hard getting all this stuff together. We have uh, an, an interview with Andy, which I'm excited about, and uh, a bunch of other awesome stuff coming out here in the next, gosh, the next month's going to be crazy. Um, be a pretty wild couple of weeks here. Um, like as you're listening to this podcast, we just released Happy Toolbox Volume Two. So there's 100 and new, 180 new models in the store right now. Um, and then, yeah, Plus is is so big. Um, it's it's a big it's a big project for us. We're really really excited to get this out. So can't wait to share so much more about it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited as well. Um... And uh, I think unless there's any other news we should get to, we could wrap this one up and uh, um, and uh, get get back to working on Plus. <laughs> getting all these products, <laughs> getting all these products launched, getting a happy toolbox out, which uh, that's what I've been playing with in R, uh, R21 a ton. Um, you may have seen some stuff on Instagram that I've been playing with the happy toolbox models. They're, they're really uh, unique models. Go check them out. Um, and uh, we'll have more news about that as early as next week. So um, uh, let's uh, let's wrap this one up, uh, if unless there's anything else. And um, I think oh, I, I think- do, I do, I have, I have one last thing I forgot to tell you guys about. <gasps> Hit me. Mm-hmm. If you go to grayscalegorilla.com/slash/podcasts, we have revamped the entire podcast user interface. So now you can easily find us on all your favorite streaming sites, uh, go through the archive of past episodes. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier to find these. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I got a little sneak peek of that this morning. Our meeting is looking good. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We got the podcast back and, uh, you know, let us know your thoughts. If you're listening this late, you're all ultimate fan. And, uh, so we want to hear from you. You know, if you're watching on YouTube here, leave a comment, let us know, um, maybe a topic or something that we can discuss in future podcasts. And, uh, you know what? Hey, if you're listening this late, uh, let us really know you're, you're listening and let us know your, um, streaming setup right now. What's, what's your go-to? What are we missing? What do we not subscribe to? Um, is Showtime worth it? You know what I'm saying? Like, help us out. <laughs> Crunchyroll. And uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. And and it, what always helps is um, uh, heading over to iTunes and and giving us a rating or a comment or something over there. It helps people discover the podcast uh, when they're looking for it. So, um uh, with that, let's end this one. Thank you as always for listening to the Grayscale Gorilla Show, the Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Should we do the THX noise? Maybe the big ending. Bye. Bye.